judging by the hundreds of photos Pete took, harvest must have been one of his favorite times of the year. In July, farmyards bustled with preparation for the threshing run. It was a time of hope, the first harvest of the season. The White brothers still speak with fondness and excitement as they describe the thrashing crew and the 20-ton steam engine creeping up the gravel road toward their farm. That's what I remember is the sound of the engine coming down the road to coming to our place. And uh, it was an exciting time at that time because it was, uh, you lived out there in the country and you didn't see a lot of traffic on the, <laughs> on the road. but. Uh, you could always tell when the steam engine was coming, the threshing goo was coming, the black smoke coming out of the, the pipe on the steam engine and the sound of the, of the engine. And uh, They always, always had a whistle on them, just yeah, like a, right. a train engine, steam, steam train engine. And they'd blow that whistle when yeah. they got close to your house. So the they knew you were coming. In this photograph, Kenny White rides his pony named Dolly to deliver water to the thrashing crew. The water boy was a welcome sight for the hot and thirsty men working in the fields. Of what they called a binder that would cut the grain and put it in uh, um, bundles. And then after the bundles, they would pick up the bundles and put them in shocks. And those would uh, have to cure or dry out. And then they had the wagons go out and pitch the bundles on the wagons and put them into the thrashing machine. Threshing time was especially exciting for young boys whose responsibilities grew with each passing year. Like pencil marks on the wall, harvest time rolls were the measure of approaching manhood. And I imagine maybe by 14, I was allowed to take a team and uh, haul bundles and pitch them into the thrashing machine. That was a uh, big step up the uh, ladder in uh, respect of my peers to when I was allowed to do that. Just as the neighboring men came together to make a thrashing run, so did the women team up to prepare and serve the abundant meals. Well, I tell you, they had good eats. You know, they had, it'd be at probably 15 men or more. They'd come in there and eat at one place, and uh, the na one lady neighbor would come over and help the other lady neighbor to feed this gang. They made the, the meat and the mashed potatoes and gravy and a couple of vegetables and bread and butter, of course. And then uh, they also had uh, different kinds of dessert, pie and cake. I don't know, remember what else it was. But uh, it kept the women busy all the time. But I look back and think, how, how in the world did we ever work in the afternoon when we ate that much of them? <laughs> well, that was the highlight of the season, I guess. I mean, your neighbors come in, you work together, and you had your stories and your, you know, just general visiting. Neighbors relied on one another. Most were relatives or close friends, but even if people had their differences, they put those aside to get the job done. Without the technology we have on farms today, families needed extra hands and extra muscles.